Hello and welcome to I Heart Board Games, where today we are doing another top 10. This time with Ronald for a top 10 legacy games. This is Ronald's list of legacy games. I'm just here to react. So this is a reaction video and a top 10 video. Let us know what you react to in the comments below. Thank you for being here, Ronald. How hard was this list? Well, <laughs> I have only ever played 11 legacy games. So... Oh, no. <laughs> that made it, it... It's kind of hard because I think the further you get from something, the harder it is to remember how you felt about it in a moment. Right. You're talking about like time fast? Yeah, exactly. So like the further... The more recent that I played something, I obviously have a really affectionate view of it because I remember it so well. Mm -hmm. It's like all I can remember from a game. Because these are not games you can come back to. You play them right. once through with exception Typically. and then you never go back and re-experience it so you're trying to remember how did i feel about this then because mm. i know how i feel about it now i know like the memory that i've carried with me but like oh. you know what i mean yeah i know what you mean i don't remember all of the you minutia of the games <laughs> that we played in the past right but well, you've been there for most of these so. yeah that's why i'm here <laughs> um are there honorable mentions? There so are you some played games, eleven. <laughs> there are some games I would like to mention as to why they're not on the list. Oh, okay. Well, so we'll we'll bring those up when we get to yes. right before we get to the end. So we're gonna do ten through two, and then we'll talk about those, and then we'll present number one. But for now, let's start with number ten. Okay. Uh, I don't have all the publisher information and all that. That's stuff fine. This time. It but, pops uh, up on the screen like right here. <laughs> Uh, so number 10 is a game we actually played on the stream. It uh, It's a great franchise that everyone loves. It is Aeons and Legacy. Number 10, Aeons and Legacy. Now, because yes. it's number 10, and as said before, there are 11, that doesn't necessarily mean that this is a game you like so here's the thing about it <laughs> is that i can see that it is a good game and it is a game mm -hmm. that is much beloved in the industry yeah. although it was not necessarily for me i actually preferred regular aeons in versus the legacy i did think that the legacy element was was done pretty well i mean um <laughs> you can tell they like talked to some people about how to do a legacy game, but you can also tell they had not done it before. Mm. There was just some issues with how the stickers didn't quite line up, and yeah. uh, there was some errata in the box, and then there was an errata of that errata. You know, there was just some quality issues, um, and it drug. It drug yeah, on. Yeah, it did. For us, we ended up having to play it way more times than we wanted to because in the end, I, I don't remember the exact stipulation, but it was like you had to keep playing it at the end until you won or something like that. I was going to say, was that one of the ones where if you fail, you just play it again, no changes? Yeah, something like that. I, you can correct me in the comments down below. But yeah. I still think it's a good game, and I love legacy games, and I loved still the opening of all the envelopes and putting yeah, all the stickers and upgrading itself. your cards. We just weren't good at it. We had not it played it as a group. affected the way we liked it. Yeah, and we were playing it on stream, and we those streams were not well viewed by our, by our fan base because I think people were afraid of spoilers. Mm -hmm. So we were just kind of a, like in a vacuum with this game that we did not know anything about. Yeah. But it, I still think it's a good game. And if you like Aeon's End, I think you'd like Aeon's End Legacy. Well, there's number 10, Aeon's End Legacy. Um, I like deck builders. Some reason Aeon's End has never really gripped me. It's never pulled me into one of those portals they do in that game. <laughs> I don't know, it's just the whole system. It just, I, the one thing that's cool about it that everyone mentions with it is you take the whole deck and you just flip it over. You don't have to shuffle. I'm like, okay. Eventually, so many people have mentioned it's like gimmicky. But, I mean, if it works, it works. Um, we were playing a game recently on stream, Taverns of Tiefenthal, where they kind of had, yeah, here's the thing. You always put it on top of your deck, so you're always going to get these things where you can plan your moves. But flipping a whole deck of Aeon's End over is not really a plan to me. 
it's like I don't remember what I played. <laughs> there is an element to that, and you know, like the order that you discard things, mm -hmm. you're gonna get it back in that order, and you can stack your deck. Uh. So yeah, that, <laughs> I forgot about that. I that yeah. actually that actually leads into one of the. I do like that element of it. Yeah, so it, it's a tough thing to plan, I guess, if you play it enough. And even between the legacy game and uh, playing the regular game, it it's just fine. When it comes to deck building, I'm like, give me Clank. Give me Tyrants of the Underdark. Give me, there's many others. And when it comes to legacy games, give me some of these that are gonna show up on the list. Um, so, because the two things it does isn't as good as the other things I like, for example, there's a Clank Legacy. <laughs> I don't know where that ranks on your list. I haven't played it yet, but it's like, okay, this is deck building Legacy. I think I'll take the other one, even though I haven't played it. But we'll see where that ranks because we're moving on to number nine. Number nine is The King's Dilemma. Ah, yes. choices must be made. That's right, that's right. <laughs> uh, King's Dilemma is a really fascinating uh, kind of moral quandary kind of game where you're playing as visors to the king. Mm. And um, you have to, each game is another generation of time in this mythical world. Mm -hmm. And um, you have a house and you have kind of secret goals that you're interested in. And so you're making decisions in the game about, oh, you know, Slavery has come up as a as a topic. Do we agree with these people being enslaved or should we free them? Or there are touchy you know, topics. Yeah, okay. hunger or you know, all kinds of topics that would be, you know, kind of political in nature. So if you're that's not for you, don't play this game. But I think um, they give a warning at the beginning. I think they do too. Yeah, when you play it. You need a warning because it's, there are some sensitive topics. Um, I like this game. It's a great legacy game. Um the people I played it with were not people I know in real life. So uh, I think if you want to play this, you should play it with your real life friends because there's going to be another element, the element of nuance there, of how they, re how people react and stuff. Well, also just knowing your friends and knowing like, oh, I know how what you're, I know how you're going to feel about this. Right. You know, I know how you usually vote in this situation, and I'm, I can read the room, and I know, you know, when Jesse makes that face, I know he's against me, you know, or whatever it might be. Um, so for me, that's the reason it's a little bit lower on my list is because mm -hmm. I didn't get to have that experience with it, but I still think it's a really fun game. I got to explore a really fun house in the game and it didn't hurt that in the end I was like declared the grand winner or whatever oh. you want to call it. I don't want to say because of spoilers, right. okay. but in the end there is kind of like <laughs> a grand winner and I was the one who was, who got that honor. So that's nice too. <sighs> And you played that game a little bit too. I did play it a little bit. It, um, it allows for people to come in and come out and uh, the scheduling didn't quite stack up. And also, I don't know if it was the game for me. Um, it really is just choices to be made. And the thing that I didn't like at the beginning, which I understand, I don't think it's a huge spoiler, but it changes because you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, my motivation to make a decision was not because of me, it was because of you know what I had played or my cards or it was, I don't know, it, it was just changing every game. I didn't like that either. Like I wish I had one set path instead of being like, oh, I'm this person. I understand your generations of people, but it just felt like, oh, my motivations are completely different every time. And, um, but I understand that's different later, the more you play it. Yeah, and you know, the thing about it is it does kind of lead to like this Team A versus Team B mentality. Like, mm -hmm. we always like these things because our house wants that and these people yeah. always want these things. So it starts to be kind of samey in that way. But when you get to a certain point in the game, that kind of disperses and you end up just, like you're saying, you get to kind of do exactly what you want and you're not kind of guided by these cards or your faction or whatever you're more guided by what you just feel in the moment and how you role played your your family up until that point hmm. so yeah it's a good game it's a little touch it can be that subjects can be a little touchy uh but i think the legacy part of it is cool and it's different from all the others on the list um let's move on to number eight okay my number eight is my city mm, i want to play this one but it's number eight 
Tell yes, me why. Yes, well, like I said before, I love legacy games. I love almost every legacy game. This game is no exception. I really like it. Um, this one you have envelopes and each envelope is three games and you end up playing mm -hmm. it 24 times, but the games are very short. And this game is super different from most of the rest on the list as well. It is got polyomino shapes and you're like putting them on a board and you're creating your own thing. Uh, we rushed through this game. Mm. Um, we ran through it super, super fast. And I think that colored my opinion of it a little bit. But cool. the reason that it's a little bit lower down is there's not really like a story per se. I mean, yes, there's a story in that you're building a city over time, you know, and you start off with just like trees and rocks and you get industrial and, you know, all this stuff is going to happen over time. Yeah. But there's not like characters to get involved with or even just flavor text there's just one sentence of flavor text in maybe each game or something it's very simplistic in that way and part of what i really love about legacy games is this ongoing story that you hmm. get from a lot of the other legacy games even with aeon's end or with um king's dilemma or whatever those games there's a big story going on this one not so much but i really love the mechanisms of it there's a catch-up mechanic that's built in to the game. Um, every game, the person who comes last gets a boon, and whoever comes first gets a penalty, basically. Something that makes it harder for them to proceed. Um, so yeah, and it's it's just really, it's fun, and it's it's a quiet game also. You know, you're playing and it's just, you flip over a card and it tells you what, what shape to put on your board. Well, everybody is having to put that shape down, but there's different rules in each game about how you can lay them. And you, you're trying to math out this puzzle. I love puzzle games. I love tile laying. What's not to love? Hmm. But over time, your pieces are going to be different than my pieces, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just, it's a great game. I love my city. Hmm. I, I got to play this. I think still. you will like it. Uh, Dave and Ilka, uh, we're at Luzapalooza, twitch.tv slash Luzapalooza, part of TLN. Uh, they've been playing this like for weeks, it seems like months at a time like it's a long game like a lot of sessions no it's eight envelopes each envelope has three games the game That's each four. envelope asks lasts about a, about an hour okay yeah i think they spread it out though like week by week so that's 24 weeks that's half a year oh you're well you're meant to play the envelope all at once all three games. oh okay because each hmm. envelope is a chapter it has like the three these three games go together oh okay yeah and they're super fast i mean like i said you can play an envelope in an hour Hmm. So, how many players did you? Have? We had three players. Okay. Yeah, I want to try it. It doesn't really add any time to add more players because you play simultaneously. Mmm. So, I like it. I want to try it. I can't ask any questions. I never played it or give my opinion on it. So, I just want to play it. Yeah, it's fun. Get so, it. yeah. Moving on to number seven. Number seven for me is a game that some people say is not a legacy game. And we didn't define legacy games at the beginning of this. All but right. to me, a legacy game is a game where you permanently affect the components by mm -hmm. writing on them or adding stickers to them or ripping them up. And oftentimes you're playing over many game sessions through a narrative storyline. But most important is the, the rules are changing because you're changing the components. So my game in this slot is Gloomhaven. You should be seeing a question popping up right here. Is Gloomhaven a legacy game? <laughs> what do you think? I think it is. I consider it a legacy game. If it if it weren't on this list, it would certainly be on my probably on my top ten games of all mm -hmm. time. We played this game through a campaign. We played forty some odd uh, sessions, and we got through the main story of the game. Uh, How's it not to, one though? Some put, people say we'll it's put that question here. How's it not a legacy? I think it is, right? Yeah, you add stickers to your yeah, cards. Yeah, there's permanent changes there. Yeah, you permanently Who add says stickers it's to not? the map. <laughs> well, you know how people are. They love their def You're welcome to feel about it however you want. That's I a just legacy think game. it is a legacy. I do too. And it is it's a crazy. great, great game. It is like D and D in a box, except yeah. you don't have those classic races and classes. You have a completely invented uh, world that's completely mm -hmm. fleshed out. I love the 
the road events and the city events that happen in between the sessions yeah. because each game doesn't have a lot of story to it there's just kind of a little bit of story it's not as important as like the mechanisms of let's fight the baddies yeah and it, it mostly just comes down to each kind of session is let's fight the baddies it is kill all the baddies dungeon crawl so it gets a little bit samey with that some and i would appreciate more variability in there and i understand mm -hmm. that that they're gonna have that with the frost haven so i can't wait but gloomhaven is fantastic it's one of the top games on bgg yeah it's great I think maybe, I hope Isaac Childress has learned a lot from Frosthaven, has learned a lot from even Jaws of the Lion. I mean, not Frosthaven, Gloomhaven okay. and Frost and uh, Jaws of the Lion for Frosthaven. Yeah, and um, I, that, you know, I see that, and obviously when we're recording this, Frosthaven has not come out yet, but yeah. I'm still getting all those emails about, we changed this, we Soon. did that, Soon. you know. I think that they learned a lot just when they put out Jaws of the Lion. Um, yeah. And I have that, but I have not yet played it. So let us it's know like below. Have you played now. that one? Or top 11, something like that on BGG. It's way up there really fast. Just like Gloomhaven did. And is it still number one? It, it's, it's a bad game right now. It's top four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't checked up because, you know, no cons means what am I researching for? I can't go play these games anyway. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, Gloomhaven. Uh, I liked it so much so that we played it a few times. Yeah. And I have the app. It's very different. It feels like I'm playing turn-based Diablo or something like that. Um, but yeah, I still like it. I really, considering getting Jaws of the Lion, it's just my thought is like, who am I going to play that with? Or, I don't know. I mean, you haven't even played it and you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, because I wanted to get the perfect group together. Right. Yeah. And we don't live near each other anymore, so. Yeah. Um, or else that would have been already it decided. Already been done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that was number seven. Any more to say about that? No. Then let's move on to number six. Okay, number six is a fantastic legacy game that we played on the channel. Mm. And it has a soft spot in my heart. A lot of these legacy games are cooperative, mm -hmm. but this one is competitive. It is Charterstone. Charterstone. Yes. And it was basically our kickoff of our Twitch channel, the like official mm -hmm. kickoff. There were some streams before, but the okay. official kickoff was our stream of Charterstone, the Charterstone campaign. And it's how we first made a lot of our now followers and met so many people. And the game is just great. It offers about you. so <laughs> many changes and like just unexpected things in the box mm -hmm. that you just, what? Yes. That was in there? And I'm not going to say what it is, but just, you know, <laughs> the, I, we still remember those moments and that's what makes it so great. Uh, Charter Sun is a game about like, you're in kind of a fantasy world, you're building up a city and each of you kind of specialize in a different thing. Mm -hmm. And so you're doing like a basically a worker placement kind of game yeah. uh, to get stuff and unlock boxes. And that's another thing about that game is there's so many unlocks. It's just constantly unlocking new stuff and laying down stickers. And that's part of the fun of playing a legacy game is all the unlocks. Yeah. Um, and despite the fact that I don't even know if I even won any of the games, I came second like throughout the whole campaign, but it didn't matter. Go back and watch it. Know, that's the mark of a good game is that even if you're not winning, you're still having so much fun. Yeah. Um, I remember liking it. Um, I remember, well, let's give it some things that I wasn't crazy about, which was stuff like um, that we didn't have six players at the table. So you had to have these dummy areas, which wasn't that bad, but it, we were like, oh, it'd be cool if we had real people in those spots. But um, I don't think it affected the game that much. It just was missing two personalities that uh, could have been at the table. Yeah. yeah, that didn't bother me at all. Yeah. I, I didn't mind it. I think you can play with even fewer people, but I think I really four was the sweet spot because how are you going to get six people to commit to all those leaks? Right. Well, it's digital now. I mean, maybe you can find someone online to do it. And I know some of our followers did do that. Yeah, they got right. together <laughs> a group and they played through it. I, I don't know if they had as good of an experience playing digitally with online folk yeah, as know. we did playing with our friends but uh, it's a great game if you get a chance to play it there were some people that weren't happy with it i remember that I remember the reports coming back 
and some people not like him, but some people do, and that's going to be a lot of things on this list, like our like your number ten. So um, yeah, but I liked it. We liked it, as far as I remember. So that's number six. Six. Good. It's time for number five. Number five is Pandemic Legacy. Season two. Okay. <laughs> Pandemic Legacy Season 2. Um, it is no secret that when people ask me what is my favorite game, I usually tell them Pandemic Legacy. Right. Um, I don't usually specify a season, and honestly, it's hard to compare them to each other because I love them all. Um, but that's why we're here. <laughs> uh, it's obvious they're all going to be on this list. Yeah. But um, if I have to, have to, have to rate them, I put two at the bottom of them. Agreed. Just because it is really different from the other two. Um, Very different. When you start the game, you just have like this much of the world. Mm -hmm. And throughout the course of it, you're finding the world and mm -hmm. you're laying down the stickers of the world. And I don't think that's a spoiler because you can see there's a huge board that's basically empty when, when you start the <laughs> yeah. game. But the other thing is the mechanism of, um, you know, the cubes are bad and as mm -hmm. they explode, that's bad. It's flipped on its head and instead the cubes are good and you want to keep cubes on the board because the cubes represent supplies instead of diseases. And I love that it's set in the post-apocalyptic time. They did a really great job with the art in that mm -hmm. game. We got to experience the scratch off cards in that one. Yep. Um, it was a lot of fun. I mean, we loved it. It didn't have all of the same like spine tingling moments that I think the other two did. Mm -hmm. I can't remember a single moment like, oh, remember such and such character that such and such? It's like, uh, I don't yeah. necessarily have that story in my mind like I do for the other ones. Moments where characters did things. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. It was uh, a lot of like game mechanisms for me that I remember like, I remember, oh, we have to make the line from this city to that city. Right. And um, I kept waiting for that in yeah. Zero. Which we I was had. too. Yeah. Like, can we connect <laughs> those cities together yeah. some way? And we never, well. We might talk about that later. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, okay, spoilers for, minor spoilers for Pandemic Season 2, where you already mentioned you're revealing the map, but the direction it was going, you know, the country that wasn't revealed, um, I remember us being excited to, you know, let's keep going and finding out because it was similar to the end of season zero where they present a big thing and you're like, well, this is going to be the next four months of our life is and see, I don't even exploring this thing. Oh, okay. So that's that, that, you know, that just, it's goes the same show. as season zero, but not presented it the same way. I see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'll have to go back and have a look at that. But, yeah. Um, we didn't, we didn't record that one though. So it would have to be somebody else's game. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You can find playthroughs online. No yeah. problem. But, um, uh, season two pandemic legacies, it's a great game. Yeah. And, and I think if you're going to, if you are going to play through the franchise, you mm -hmm. will not be sad to have played it. Yeah. It's, it's fun. So. I think it had a slow start, but it gets better as you go on. Because yeah, I remember it's like, you're like this. This is all we're playing on this tiny board. It's the same feeling I got whenever I played like Ticket to Ride New York, where it's like a tiny board. It's like this is it, right? And you know it's that's fine. how these games it's they just, build on each other, right? So yeah, you start with something easy. You're kind of with they got the training wheels on, and then mm -hmm. as it goes on, you get more and more. And it starts to become, you know, there's an element of like predictableness of how it's going to play out. And that's the yeah. same in all three of them. Um, and that's comforting to know, like, oh, I bet you next we're going to uncover South America or whatever. You know, it's like those all, all those huge stickers. Also, mm, that's a little thing yeah. against it is those huge stickers are really hard to get just yeah. perfectly right. And you know? by the end, your board is like thick <laughs> from stickers. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, great game. And I remember I hosted that one at my house. Mm -hmm. which was special to me because I was always like setting it up before you guys would get oh, there. Yeah. And it was like, you know, just a really Same great time. Same for Gloomhaven. But yeah. Indeed. Good times. Mm -hmm. That was number five. Let's move on to number four. Okay. Number four is Betrayal Legacy. Mm. What a game. Yes. That is available on this channel right here. 
<laughs> yes, uh, you can watch us play through that with Melissa and Joe. We had a really great time. We actually like binged it um, over like the course of like three or four days. We would get at your house at like 10 a.m. and play till like That's 10 o'clock at right. night. That's right. That was kind of like what we did with season zero. Yeah. It didn't seem as rough though. Why? Well, the days were split apart. So it would be like guess, one week yeah. here, another week there, another week there, whatever. Um, oh, you're right. You're right. Mm hmm. So, uh, Betrayal Legacy is the legacy version of Betrayal of the House on the Hill. Mm -hmm. Betrayal of the House on the Hill is a classic game, partially designed by Rob Davio, or maybe completely designed by him, I don't remember now, but Rob Davio is like the king of legacy games, so it made sense that he would take this much beloved property and turn it into mm -hmm. a legacy game. I, when I first heard about it, was so hesitant because how could you possibly give that game the legacy treatment? What was the story? How would this work? Mm. But boy, they did a great job with it. It's so engaging and you're playing as a family over multiple generations and the house itself goes through these changes over time. Many years have passed, so you've remodeled and you've moved the rooms around and you never know, it might not even be a house at some point. I'm not gonna give <laughs> anything away, but the other thing is there's branching paths of the narrative. So in each, in many of the games, there's several different haunts depending on where you end up. And at the end, you have a fully replayable game. Never played it. <laughs> that that doesn't come with the all the legacy game. games. Charterstone might be the only, and My City might be the only ones that I've mentioned thus far. Oh no, Aeon Zen does too, that have a playable game at the end because a lot of these are just disposable. You play it, you chuck it. I don't think you can play King's Dilemma after it's over or. I'm not sure. Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we never have. No. But you could. And I love how that game ends. I love some of the, I don't want to give anything away, but there's different elements, physical elements in the game that they tell you to do. Just little quirky things like yelling at a player or oh, right. screaming out or handling certain components in a certain way. It's just, and if you've played it, you know just what I'm talking about. That's just so cool. Mm. And the way they incorporated the betrayal formula into yeah. a legacy game, great. I remember having a lot of fun with it, um, but I want to talk about you know people who don't have fun with it. As another fellow streamer, Twitch.tv slash Rolling with Rock, they play that with this group. They enjoy. Pandemic Legacy, they really like the story, and story was the issue that they had with Betrayal Legacy. How do you, because it was, more, you know, this house where one story really didn't affect the next one. Yep, you're right. Yeah. You, you got a good point. The overarching story, I felt like, was less important in that one yeah. than each individual story. Yeah. And honestly, after, I mean, when I started making this list, I couldn't remember a lot of the stories. I mm -hmm. couldn't remember what happened. I can remember a couple moments that That's happened. But I couldn't though. remember exactly what the story was in, in most of the ones that we did. Mm -hmm. I had to go back and rewatch the playthrough. But it's not really that important because in the end, it all wraps up in a nice little neat bow. Mm -hmm. And it's purposefully vague throughout to give you this sense of dread, to give you this yeah. sense of horror, and, and and to paint that kind of scary, spooky story. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna just come out and be like, I don't even remember what the end is, but like, it's a demon or, you know, yeah. whatever it might oh, be. It like was. instead it's very vague, like he is listening or he is remember waiting. That. And so you're supposed to just try to paint the story in your mind. I liked that. Yeah. You know, and there was enough story in, contained in each one of the stories, in each one of the, you know, sessions that I was happy. Yeah, I was happy playing it. There's moments that I remember about it. Um, they weren't story related. But they were just things that happened, wild things that happened during that game. So, and it's all available here on this channel. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's Betrayal Legacy. That's your number four, number three time. Yes, and I guess you know, if you know anything about legacy games, we got three slots left, and you probably know three big, big titles. I know one or zero of them. So number three <laughs> is Pandemic Legacy Season One. 
Yeah. This has for the longest time been my number one game of all time. Anytime mm. anyone asks me what's my favorite game, I say Betrayal Legacy. I mean, Pandemic Legacy, season one. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh um, my. This game was the first legacy game I played. If not the first, one of the first. Think, yeah, it had to be because it got me completely addicted. We couldn't tear the cards. Right, right. right. <laughs> it got me addicted to the formula. I became a legacy addict. And I'm just like so into it now. I, every legacy game that comes out, I want to get it and I want to play it. Yeah. Um, obviously, now I've played like 11. Travel of them. hundreds of miles to go play it. Exactly, exactly. And this one, I still remember <laughs> so many of the character moments and story moments that happened in that game, mm. more so than I remember about season two. And maybe that's because it was the first. Yeah. But um, I I remember at the end, we, we won in the end and mm -hmm. just getting up and dancing and jumping and screaming. <laughs> it's like, what game makes you do that? Right. Well, you probably none. But no. for me, Pandemic Legacy Season 1 did. And, you that know, is we, crazy. We, it must have come down to like a big moment. I mean, games that come down to a big moment like that, it happens. I mean, especially in a co-op where you can celebrate with others. Because usually you're celebrating someone's demise in a board game. Um, which will make you jump and dance and everything. But not everybody's doing it. But in a co-op in a game that has lasted 21 sessions. Um, yeah, it deserved a dance and a, and a celebration. And you know, why is it not higher up on my list now? Well, that's because we did have to play it 21 times. We weren't that good at it at the time. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of losses, which made us had to replay months. We almost had to play the full maximum number of games, which is 24. Yeah. And that can start to be a slog and it can start to get kind of depressing of like, oh man, we got to play the month again, again. Mm -hmm. We did that for the last four months. <laughs> and uh, so that, you know, has a can kind of get puts a ding against it. But I still think it's a great, great, great game. Yeah. And if you like regular pandemic, you will love this. The story <laughs> is fantastic. And even though I'm not even like that great of a pandemic fan, I mean, I can take or leave right yeah, the pandemic. I don't really not. I um, never ask for it or reach for it. It's fine if you want to teach like someone a co-op game that has yeah. never heard of a co-op game. Yeah. But I'm also a controlling person. So like, it's hard for me to play pandemic without controlling everything. Yeah. So it's like, this kind of breaks that mold a little bit. It's like, you know what you should do? <laughs> Mathematically, the best yeah. solution is this. And then you look around, the room was empty the whole time. It was just right, you. Right, right, right. Um, Fortunately, none of us are really that bad. No. And you could see just how bad we were uh, because we played a different pandemic that might be coming up on the list. I mean, you already named one and two. I think you know what it is. But I don't know whether it's one or two. I have my guesses. I know the two games that are there. I don't know. Well, you want to make a guess? Sure. Well, I know the two games. No, I don't want to make a guess. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I don't know is your honorable mention, which we'll get to right after number two, which is right now. Yes, so number two is Pandemic Legacy Season oh, Zero. Oh my, I know what number one is. <laughs> <laughs> Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. So this, I mean, what more can I say? you can go and watch the playthrough on our channel um it's if it's available we actually all moved away from each other so we mm -hmm. couldn't be together to play through this one even though we'd played the other two together we had to make a decision to basically schedule a special vacation just <laughs> to play it together mm -hmm. i mean people were like you're a great you're going on a vacation just to sit in a room and play a game yeah, yes and we streamed it on the internet mm -hmm. so definitely check it out uh they learned so much from the other games and it is obvious that they did because they fixed so many of the little quibbles from the other games yeah you now have three different people you can be and you can swap in the middle of the game you now have you know there's a lot more to it i don't want to get into all the details of because of spoilers but you they just fix so many things. Yeah. Uh, one of the things you know just from the beginning is that you'll be great at either succeeding, adequate, or failing. Mm -hmm. In this case, if you're succeeding or adequate, you get to proceed to the next month. You don't have to replay it. 
So a lot of times in the other versions, we would have had to replay months because we mm -hmm. didn't do well enough. We didn't succeed all the goals. But in this one, you don't have to replay it if you get you know a couple of the goals or one of the goals. So that was great because that meant it kept our morale up even though we knew we could do better and it pushed yeah. us to do better. Um, I just really liked the story of it. It's set in the 1960s, the mm -hmm. Soviets and the Cold War. You did a great job with it. Everything was so neat and there were surprises in there that I did not expect. Yep. And mm, I don't want to go into any of this other really spoilers <laughs> about it, but uh, I'll just say that there's, too much. there's different endings you can get basically. There's mm -hmm. like kind of different paths you can go down. And we didn't discover that that was the case till we finished the game. And we went back and looked at all the things we hadn't touched and we were like, whoa, there's all this <laughs> cool stuff. Um, which is just great. Yeah. And it could be that that's the freshest one in my memory. So that's why I feel the strong, strongest about it. It's almost it, like you just played it. It's almost like I just played it yesterday. <laughs> um, but I also just played My City as well just a few days ago. So. Wow, really? Yeah. When did you finish that? Well, technically, we haven't finished the last envelope. Oh, you're still going. We're on the last envelope. You played a legacy game in full in between playing another legacy game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here, am I right? <laughs> he also has some honorable mentions, though, and I don't know what these are. So they're not let's see honorable what that is. mentions; they are just mentions. Mentions. These are also legacy games that so I played. So the reason that the <laughs> so I just want to talk about some of the games. For okay. example, Risk Legacy. Okay. This is like the first, basically known as the first legacy game that was designed. I would love to have played it, but I'm not that big of a fan of Risk. I'm not a big fan of uh, soldiers on a map kinds of games. I have it. Right, and I would I have played, played it. through it, but I have not played it, so that's why it's not on this list. All right. Uh, Machi Koro Legacy, similar situation. I would have played it, but I'm not the biggest Machi Koro fan either. It's not a game for me. So I just didn't want to play through a whole campaign of something that I didn't really care for the base yeah. game very much. I hear it's better, but... We don't need to play that. <laughs> the Rise of Queensdale by The Brands is another legacy this. game, a competitive, I think it's kind of a Euro-y actually mm -hmm. legacy game. I have it on my shelf. It's still in shrink. I have not played it. That's why it's not on this list. And last of all, Seafall, I have played. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I guess we're ready for number one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think you probably have guessed what it is. But number one is Clank Legacy. Yes. This is huge on my list. We love Clank. Um, if you've watched any of the top tens, there's somewhere on there for Melissa and myself. Um, and myself. And you. Now, that's something I may have glossed over on some of the things I asked you about. How many players did you play Clank Legacy with? Three. Total of three. Mm hmm. Okay. Yep, we had the same three players the whole time. Do you think it would work at two? Just the same as Clank would work at two. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, it's been it's been a know, while over a year since I finished it. Okay. Now, I mean, I could play with three. I was just wondering, like, you where check, I fall you into that. You could check that. BGG. I, I wouldn't want to say for sure an opinion yeah. on that because I didn't like experience it yeah. that way. But um, Clank is one of my favorite franchises. I love the Clank uh, series of games. We have Clank in Space. I've loved regular Clank as well. And it's a deck building game where you're exploring a dungeon, basically. And the cool thing about Clank Legacy is the board is actually two-sided. So mm -hmm. you have the regular, like, daytime kind of look, and then you flip it over and it's like a nighttime. I'm, I'm saying daytime and nighttime. Those are not the right words. Put in the comments below what the correct words are <laughs> but each of the games i think it's maybe 10 games mm -hmm. tells you which board to play on so like oh we just laid this cool sticker on this board but now we have to flip over for the next game to the other board we don't get to interact with it we have to kind of wait <laughs> a whole game to be able to do whatever that thing was and it's competitive right mm -hmm. yes okay. well it's semi competitive there is definitely a cooperative element to it because oh. you are working for the same company and there is a villain company that you're against. Mm. So in some cases you do have to work together a little bit to make sure the villain does not really affect right, your game right. in a negative way. 
and you're oftentimes asking the table at large, okay, would y'all be cool if I did this thing, which is less negative than this other thing that is more negative? And there's kind of this, uh, these bunch of check boxes on the back of the rule book. And when bad things happen, you have to check that. Mm. And when you get to certain ones, there's like a passage you need to go read and things that happen. Wow. So you're trying to make sure the villain company, I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's set in the world of Penny Arcade, um, Acquisitions Incorporated. As you're checking those boxes off, when you get to the one that you have to read, you know something bad is about to happen. So mm. like you need to kind of work together to make sure that the villain company does not get enough check, check boxes on that thing. Wow. Um, we were fortunate that through the first maybe five or six games, nobody died. Like nobody got knocked unconscious and scored zero. But it does happen. And the thing about Clank is that you have to be okay with that. You have to be willing to <laughs> play a game and end up scoring zero and come dead last. If you're not cool with that, if you're like a poor loser, I'm not calling you a poor loser, but if you can't handle that, <laughs> do not play this game. And once again, this one at the end has kind of a grand poobah of the thing. Right. And what I loved is the person who won the least number of games ended up being our grand poobah at the end. Was so it you? No, it was not me. <laughs> no, I, I did not, was not the one who won the most nor won the least. I was just in the middle. Right in the middle. Mm. Yeah, which is where I usually fall. How so. many uh, games was it? Is that a, isn't it a varied amount like pandemic? It's something like, like 10. Oh, it's only 10 games? I think it's 10, something hmm. like that. Cool. Wow. We'll have to wait and see. I haven't played it. Oh. It's got real big, crazy stickers and your board will look totally different from someone else's. All kinds of cool stuff comes out and you're reading out of that book all the time, which just makes it so much fun. You're constantly wow. getting stickers out and you're constantly reading different passages and it's set in the world of Acquisitions Incorporated, which is very funny. So it's just a lot of fun to like read and read the different passages and character mm. voices because you meet all these crazy characters and you're playing Clank the whole time, which is of course very fun. Um, and when you first open it up, you might think wow. this looks kind of lame and, and not as fun as regular Clank, but it does not take much time for you to start building out all this cool stuff that you get to interact with. And by the end, you have like, you have your own personalized game of Clank that you can continue to play on. Have you? I have not, but yeah. <laughs> that's because I don't want to. My husband really wants to. Yeah. I just have said no. Because I don't want to like figure out how. <laughs> I don't want to have to do the work of figuring it out how to do it. Of all these legacy ga games that claim you can replay, haven't done any of them. Right? <laughs> it's just it's it's not the experience I much wanted work. from it. <laughs> right. I wanted to have ten games or however many it is of that game and, and then be done. done. I wanted yeah. to have that story and that experience. It's a movie. I have Clank. I can play Clank. I don't need to right. play Clank Legacy over and over again right. after it's over, after it's finished. Wow. Alright then. Clank Legacy, a game I haven't played yet. Unfortunately, I can't add much to it because I just haven't played it. But what did you think of the top ten? You know, you know, yeah, definitely post that in the comments down mm -hmm. below. But the thing I was going to say is these could have been in a different order. You know, I could yeah. have I could have reorganized them a whole bunch I mean, of different Seafall ways. Seafall could have been, been like all the way up there for, you know, in some other order. But I just ultimately on the day I made the list, this is how I felt. I was enjoying Seafall. Um, some scheduling issues stopped us from playing through it. But, uh, you know. Yeah, scheduling. Knows, still... it was definitely scheduling, was def not that every other player hated it. It was not what? that for no. sure. I recently talked to our fourth player, Trey, who also moved away <laughs> because of Seafall. No, um, he said he was liking it while we were playing it. Oh, good, good. You should, y'all should play it again sometime. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to meet up and play Seafall next time. I think I'll be busy that weekend. Okay. I mean, because it's only like $8 now or something like that. <laughs> I can get a couple copies of the giant ocean going on. But what did you think of all these games? I mean, is Clank Legacy one I really need to play or am I okay playing Clank? I mean, the fact that it's number one over a game that we just played, Panic Season Zero, that we're thrilled to play with. I mean, that says so much because I, I wasn't there for Clank order. Legacy. It could have been in any order. <laughs> it says a lot though. Like my city um, is one that's one that I want to play. 
So many games I want to play. So is your mind blown? Is that what your guess would have been? Maybe so, actually. I don't think it was going to be zero. Pandemic, that's what we call it now. Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. We just call it zero. <laughs> but I didn't think, yeah, I guess as you were after, I think, number five, Pandemic, or two, we call it. Um, after two, I was like, I think Clank Legacy might be number one. You were right. Yeah. You it's couldn't so guess my sad top I wasn't there to play game, the game. You guess this. <laughs> But if you want to know what my top 10 game of all time is, not including legacy games, yes. click somewhere. It's like probably right here. Everything pops up in this corner. I don't make in the, the rules. card, yeah. <laughs> Any last notes? Um, if you're hesitant about playing a legacy game, don't be. It's super fun. Um, it's it, We live in a disposable society, and mm -hmm. what game do you play that many times from your yeah. collection? I and mean, you might as well do it and, and, and you don't have to throw it away at the end. You know, some of them are replayable and also mm -hmm. it, you can make like an art piece out of it or something. You can upcycle yeah. it. Or if you're a game designer, you can use those components over, you know, <laughs> making your yeah, own designers. Designs. That's how you get some components. Yeah. Um, I have a question. You are always the one, have always been the one to organize and run these things. You're saying earlier, you were always hosting those things. Was it that way for Clank? Was it that way for my city and everything else? It was, yeah. Mm. I, it was. It was not that way for King's Dilemma. That's true. Someone it wasn't. Else was you just, the organizer of that. You just got to show up and yeah. Um, but for Clank and for my city, that was at my home. I, I was the one hosting it. I was the one setting everything up. I mean, my city doesn't have any setup. It's just take it out, and play it, You're good. But um, that's one thing. My that's city kind comes of intimidating with for my me, city though. comes with a game in the box that you can play forever. Okay. It's like the back side of the thing. It's a, it's you can just play the game. Yeah, you can just play My City without having to do why? any of the campaign. <laughs> it's a fun game. Okay. But yeah, that's one of the things that is intimidating to me for a Clank Legacy probably would be the one. Is that it'd be on me to run it. What do you mean run it? Run the game. Make sure everybody's doing everything right. You can do that. <laughs> I know I can. It's just... <laughs> Something's gonna get missed. We've missed things here before. Top 10 games we messed our rules on. <laughs> That's so I know what number one is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. But um, yeah, okay. I just gotta get past that. I mean, yeah, we played many games on the channel here. Um, but yeah, you've always been the one running the legacy games. And so it's uh, something I haven't quite dipped my toe back into. Since you know you moved what two uh, two years ago, ago yeah. eighteen months from recording this in summer of twenty twenty one, so yeah, it's been that long since I've played a legacy game. I believe like until yes in person, yeah, in per well without you involved. Mm. So maybe Cl Clank Legacy will be it. Maybe My City. These are all games that we've mentioned before on the channel and that we want to play. So hopefully we'll get get them back to the table. Without Ronald, <laughs> and that I mean, sounds I'd like play them again. You know, I would a, play them again. Yeah, it's a distance issue, though. I would play all of them again, except for one or two. Um, in the top ten part, or just the mentions? in the top ten? The top Ooh. 10. And is that because of a why a story thing, or just less than enjoyable, or? An experience you don't really need to play again. <laughs> yeah, I would not play Aeon's in Legacy again, and I would yeah. not play King's Dilemma again. But all the yeah, rest of them, I, I guess there was I play again. Like with King's Dilemma, there was a lot of story stuff going on that I can't imagine would change too much. Um, uh, there's ways. Yeah, there's definitely ways for it sure, to change. Sure, just like in but... Pandemic Season or in Zero. Yeah. Um, the thing is, I just didn't. Um, I kind of already like know how it how it ends or how it goes right. and i'm just like a kind of person that doesn't rewatch movies or reread books and you might say well you know how the other ones go too but i don't remember the details yeah so it's fine <laughs> it's fine all right well that's all 10 once again let ronald know what you think of all of those he reads every comment 
and uh, there will be one whole comment on this video <laughs> make it more than one but until next time the box is, is closed, closed. Bye.